Hello, everyone. This is Tim and Julie Harris, and this is the Harris Real Estate University Superstar Interview. Now, many of you listen to these superstar interviews live as we do them every week, and I know and I'm learning that hundreds, if not thousands of you, are listening to the superstar interviews in replay. Now, what is a Harris Real Estate University Superstar Interview? It's quite frankly our opportunity to give back to the real estate community. These are free real estate training events, and generally speaking, during these free real estate training events, that happen every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon East Coast time, we do one of, the, one of the following three things. Number one, we'll interview a top producing realtor, which we do probably, I would say, 40% of the time. And we're going to be getting back to a couple top producing realtors in the near future, so make sure you tune in and listen to the interviews live. Or, of course, by the way, you can listen to the interviews in replay on the Harris Real Estate University blog, realestateinsidernews.com. Now, on other Fridays, what we'll do is we'll interview, usually it's an economist or it's an author. I haven't done that in a while, and I want to definitely um, interview a couple economists that we've interviewed in the past. Uh, these guys, I think, for me at least, and hopefully for a lot of you, have helped us to build our business around the realities of what's happening in the economy, not necessarily what's been told to us. I remember we were uh, interviewing Jeff Nelson, and this is probably two years ago, maybe three, and he was talking about inflation before everyone else was talking about inflation he said something i julie and i were talking about this the other day he said look for the sizes of boxes to shrink in grocery stores in other words if you're used to buying a box of cereal that's so many ounces as an example he said what will happen to cover the cost to, to really disguise the fact that costs have increased so people won't be saying hey this box of cereal is now you know twice as expensive he said what they'll do is they'll reduce the size of the box reduce the content that they're selling to you, and keep the price the same. He said phase, that's phase one, and he said phase two is the size of the box and the contents will be you know, reduced from what they were previously, and then the price increases, and that's what we're seeing now. So I think it's very interesting that you know, what you can really learn from really, truly smart people like Jeff, and then we'll interview, and this is somebody else I'd love to get interviewed again, is Sean O'Toole from Foreclosure Radar. Sean was really spot on with a lot of the predictions he made, about the real estate markets, and he's somebody who occasionally guests blogs on realestateinsidernews.com, so definitely want to read what he has to say. And then other Fridays, what Julie and I do, is we pay very close attention to what we're hearing that you guys need. Seven secrets of working with buyers in today's market. Seven secrets of working with buyers in today's market. And what we had started discussing with you is a few introspective questions. Now, before we jump into that, why are we doing this topic? Well, Tim, you and I have had lots and lots of calls in the recent two to three weeks, I would say, in particular, with our graduate students, with the students in our other classes saying, what is going on with all of these crazy buyer leads that I'm getting all the time? Help me sort them out. How do I know who to work with, how much time to give them, and how can I make a lot of money right now, this second, from working with buyers? So those questions... And, Tim, just make sure that we're recording at this point, too, if you don't mind. Uh, those questions are, number one, if you guys are writing this in your notes, why should you love buyers right now? And we'll talk about that in a second. Next, what is your mindset about buyers? And nobody's looking at your answers, guys. Just be introspective. Write down some sentences that come to mind. Next question, where do these thoughts come from? Were they put in your head by somebody wandering through your office? Did you run across another agent that maybe was negative about buyers for a particular reason? Where do those thoughts come from? Are they your thoughts or someone else's? Next question, do you actually have proven buyer scripts, presentations, objection handlers, just like you do for sellers? Next question, do you actually use buyer agency agreements? And do you charge buyer processing fees? These are big questions right now. Now, these are topics, again, that are going to be relevant no matter what spokes you're building in your real estate empire, as it were. Most importantly, and I don't know if this was recorded before or not, what we want every one of you to understand clearly is that you do not have to be paying for your buyer leads. Paying for your buyer leads is insane. If you're paying for buyer leads right now, you must stop. Cancel it. Call up whatever service it is that you're buying buyer leads from and say, no, thank you, I'm not doing it anymore. Generating buyer leads, agents listening to this live now and in replay, is the easiest thing in the world to do. And you must learn to do it yourself. Every single agent, no matter what stage you are in your real estate career, no matter how successful you are or will be, 
You must learn how to generate your own buyer leads. And if you pay attention, we're going to give you the tenets of basically working with buyers, the rules, if you will, that all of you should be following. And then we're going to give you some great, easy-to-do marketing ideas for generating buyers. Julie, I want to do this in the opposite order. I want to talk about the marketing ideas first. Sure. So which point do you want to start with? Whichever one you want to start with. Uh, let's see. Well, as far as marketing goes, I'm scanning our points here. By the way, guys, all of this is posted at realestateinsidernews.com under the Superstar Interview uh, button. You can find the outline and all of these points. So if you scan down, uh, for example, point number six, Tim, if you want to work ahead. Yeah, let's work ahead. Let's okay. do this the opposite because that's what most of them are going to be interested in. All right, in. so the point number six is for you to actually have buyer lead generation systems in place. Well, let, let, let's break that down. Let's yes. say you're an agent and you don't have a lot of listings, or let's say you're an agent and you don't have a lot of listings in a particular market that you want to be farming or you want to be generating, say, buyer leads in, because the sake of this call is focusing on how to generate buyer leads. Now, it's not difficult to basically create buyer leads. What are these guys that are selling you leads online, buyer leads online? What are they doing? All they're doing is they're taking your listing information and they're posting it on their websites along with all of your information as far as bedrooms, baths, and your pictures. And nine times out of ten, unless they're realtor.com, they're then scraping your contact information off. In other words, they're taking your name off your work. And then what's happening? They're selling the leads. They're selling opportunities at the leads back to you or other agents. Now, explain to me, in what world does that make sense for you to participate in that type of thing where you are the one that's paying them for the leads that, frankly, you should be getting yourself because these are your listings? Now, if you don't have listings or if you don't have listings in areas that you want to have buyers in, it's not very difficult to overcome that. You do what we did when we got started in real estate in the early 90s. You go to other realtors and you borrow their listings. In other words, you ask their permission to market and advertise their listings. It's very basic stuff here, guys. Now, here's an amazing thing. In many of your MLSs, probably like all of them at this point, there's new IDEX rules that are in place that allow you to share each other's listings. In some boards, you can go outside of your brokerage and borrow listings legally without asking. You can advertise each other's listings. That is a huge advantage that agents even five years ago didn't necessarily have. So now – so if you're listing right now and you're saying, Tim, the reason I can't generate buyer leads is because I don't have enough listings or I don't want to be generating buyer leads in the market where my listings are, and some of you who have REO properties, that might very well be the case, no worries. Borrow other realtors' listings. Isn't that all what these public websites that are essentially you know, gathering listing information and selling it back to you, is selling buyer leads back to agents. Isn't that all they're doing is just borrowing your inventory? Well, but hang on a second, Tim. Why would that listing agent want to allow me to do that? Well, why are they allowing other agents and other websites and other companies to do it now? Yeah, and paying. And paying. I mean, there's a, this, this is no longer something that's controversial. When Julie and I were in real estate way back in the early 90s, and we were doing just this. A lot of people, oh, well, you can't be advertising somebody else's listing. But now that's perfectly acceptable, isn't it? Everything's changed. So there's absolutely no reason that a listing agent should give you any fuss about it. But, if you know, I would personally, I would always ask. I'd say, hey, is it cool if I advertise your listing? And they're going to say, well, great, where are you advertising it? And you can say here. And then from their perspective, you're doing them a favor because that's something that, you know, that they can frankly call the seller up and say, hey, listen, your house is going to be advertised here. That, you yeah, know, they're getting free advertising from you, essentially. So right. why would they say no? The only reason they'd say no is if you didn't explain to them what you were doing. Right. Okay, so premise number one, and I, again, is that agents are paying for buyer leads because of the fact that they don't know how to essentially go about getting inventory. And I just told you how to do it. Now, that's if you don't have any leads or any of your own inventory now that you want to market and advertise. Now, moving forward, let's assume – that as a result of listening to this call, you're going to go and borrow, say, 10 really primo listings. And I mean the listings that you know are going to crank the buyer calls. Every single community in the United States, no matter how challenging your market is, no matter what month of the year it is, no matter anything, there are always certain markets in your community that sell like hotcakes. When Julie and I were selling real estate, there was an area called Clintonville 
that pretty much was recession proof, was pretty much weather proof and season proof. Slam dunk listings. Average days on the market, seven. Yeah, exactly. Now, not not always. There were slow times and there were times where we were stronger. But the moral of the story was everybody has markets where things will sell like hotcakes. That's where you obviously want to be getting and borrowing listings or in eventually obviously taking listings because those markets are selling. Those are the markets where the buyers are looking. So if you're listening to this right now and you're saying, I want to generate some buyer leads, I want to you know, put some buyers in contract in the next 30 to 60 days, discover what market it is in your community that sells like hotcakes and go and borrow listings from those agents. So now let's say you have 10 really primo-looking listings in those particular markets you know, that you know sell well. Stage two is going to be putting some ads together. Now, everything we're going to tell you about, for the most part, is free or darn near free. So next thing we want you to do is, Julie? Well, so, for example, one of my favorite things, and I think yours too, Tim, is to offer to put your sign writer, you know, just a little tag on the top, with your 800 number, like 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM, on that agent's listing. Now, most of the signs that you see in your areas are not using an interactive voice response system like an 800 number. And this is something that we could probably talk for two weeks about because it's really exciting. We used it ourselves back when it was really brand new and everybody thought it was illegal. <laughs> yep. You know, But this is something that is a killer buyer call lead capture system. So 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. Right. You're going to use your your 800 number with the extension on someone else's sign or on your own signs. And again, this is after you have identified the hottest listings. Usually they're in nice first-time buyer areas in good schools, usually in a moderate to low-ish price range. And you're going to ask those listing agents. You might have to talk to four or five listing agents to get somebody who understands what you're doing here. Well, moving forward, though, because you're lots, going to put the sign right lots of markets, they'll, yeah, exactly. You're, for the sake of the sign, you're going to have to ask their permission. And here's what I would say to them, just you know, to Julie's point. Go and subscribe to 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. Now, in the era of full disclosure, we do own a part of that company. But it is the least expensive, most effective service for what they do right now. 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM is a good old-fashioned IVR service. Now, what, is, what are we talking about? I'm going to give you an example. When And, and listen, guys, what I'm telling you now is – will stun many of you as how many calls you get. I'm not overstating this. This is golden. This is golden, and to this day, this works extremely well. A lot of you will say, well, Tim, Internet marketing and all that. All right, now, something down for everyone on this call. We know that Internet marketing works, okay? We know that for the, the Internet marketing went down effectively is very powerful. We also know from every report that the patterns of buyers are that they'll start their search, like 80%, something like that, on the Internet for a house. They will sometimes make contact with three to, you know, who knows how many different realtors. That's where most of you stop because the fact is is that where the great buyers go thereafter are the neighborhoods in which they're thinking about buying. When you are driving, seeing buyers drive through neighborhoods, those are the great buyers. Those are the ones that have gone from starting their search on the net to deciding what community or communities they're considering. The buyers driving the hoods, just to be clear on this, are the best buyers. Nine times out of ten, those are the guys that are going to buy and sell with it, or I'm sorry, buy and close within 30 to 90 days. Focus on those buyers. Now, how can you get to them? Now, I'm going to, in my mind, I'm going to think that many of you don't have a lot of listings or you may have a lot of listings, but you're not necessarily getting the buyer leads that you want to have. So it's really one of those two scenarios. So it, whether it's your sign or another realtor's sign, as Julie just said, put a sign writer on the sign at the top. Everyone knows what a sign writer is, and you cannot change the language that I'm about to tell you. So get your pen and your typing fingers ready. Do this exactly the way Tim presents it to you. We have tested the snot out of this in every part of the country, in every sort of demographic, and every sort of, you know, do not change the language of what I'm about to tell you. It works, and it works well. And all it says is this, your sign writer, for free 24-hour recorded info, not information, info on this home, call 1-800-555-1212. And obviously your 800 number will be whatever your 800 number is once you subscribe to 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE. 
and then extension 1234. So I'm going to say it right out without any clip notes. For free 24-hour record info on this house, call 1-800-555-1212, extension 1234. That is the only thing your sign writer should say. Many of you have made mistakes in the past where you've not listened to that because you thought you were more clever, even though you've never done anything like this before, and you've put information opposed to info, or you've put something flowery. Call or your you name. left the extension off. Yeah. You didn't understand how it works. Exactly. The point is, guys, is that if you use that language, it's been tested. You're going to have people calling on either your listings or a borrowed listing of somebody else's that you have pretty much 24 hours a day, and these are always the best buyers. I cannot make it any more clear. Now, some of you are going to say, Tim, what about QWR codes? Tim, what about text? You know, what about texting? Tim, what about the service out there that will allow someone to pull up and you know have a virtual brochure texted to them? Okay, all that stuff is nice and dandy, but the magic behind 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE and other IVR services, by the way, is the simple fact that you call capture their information and you can call them back. The other services don't have that. So when somebody calls off your 800 number and they listen to the recording on the house, the audio recording, which you're going to do, an 800 home hotline gives you a script as to what to say, they're then going to get the information that they want, and then you're going to get a text or a page or an email from them almost simultaneously, from the service simultaneously with the caller's contact information. Literally, if they're parked in front of the house and they're on their cell phone and they're calling listening to the recording, by the time they're hanging up, you are calling them back because the service works that fast in most cases to get you their information. And you call them back and you say something along the lines of, hey, this is Tim Harris with ABC Realty as a courtesy when people call our 800 number. We like to give them a quick call back to see if they have any questions about the home they called about. And guess what? Nine times out of ten, they're going to have a question. And they just got off the phone. That is what one calls a hot lead, and you're calling them back immediately. What do you think your conversion ratio off those types of leads is going to be? Through Huge. the roof. And your rate of selling your own listings, assuming this is on your own listings, will be huge. Ours went from you know typical here and there, occasional uh, double dipping, as you guys like to call it, to about 30%. So of those of you who do have lots of listing inventory, how would you like to be co-oping with yourself all the time? Most of you are easier to do deals with yourself than dealing with other agents, and you guys know what I mean, right? So let's paint a picture for them, Tim, because this is such an important concept for them to get and to use, because this is one of the least expensive ways humanly possible to create lots of not just buyer leads, but really good quality motivated buyer leads. So let's paint that picture. I'm, I'll be the buyer. You can be the listing agent or the agent using the listing agent sign. Go for it. I've been driving these neighborhoods because I have my letter of pre-approval in my hand. I have been told I can go up to, let's say, 225000 I have identified the neighborhoods that I love. I've been pounding open houses. You know, I'm not sure whether I should be working with an agent or not. I'm just looking for the right house. I'm on the Internet every day, and I have identified maybe two great neighborhoods that have the exact schools, the exact type of house I'm after, the right kind of backyard, a tree-lined street. I am digging this neighborhood. So every day after work, I go driving through that neighborhood looking for new signs to pop up. Well, typically what happens, I call the listing agent sign, and since I'm calling after work, I go right to the office voicemail. And it says, spell the last name of the agent whose listing you're calling on. Well, I, don't, I didn't write that down. I wrote down 123 Elm Street. That's a lost lead to most of you right now. Well, I, other, I'm nowhere. I'm not a lead at that point. I just hang up the phone. And, Julie, the other important thing is, is that when people are most well, – just think of your own behavior, right? When you walk into the Apple store and you're thinking about, you know, you pick up a, any Apple product, if someone comes up to you at that exact moment – and ask you if you have any questions and would you like that little particular iPod and, you know, whatever shade matches your whatever. I mean, at that point, you're an easy sale, you're aren't you? You're probably going to say yes. Yeah, you're probably going to say You're not going to say, no, I just look and walk out. They know that you're probably going to want to buy that whatever that's in your hand and walk out with it. Oh, and by the way, they made it easy for you because they can check you out as you're standing there. Interesting, right? Right. So the point is, is that when you get to a prospect – when you get to a buyer or a seller, and here's the thought, many of these buyers are also going to be sellers. 
When you get to them right when they're fresh, right when they're hot, you will increase your sales instantaneously. Now, previous point, in case we did not make it, which I think we did, but we did not make it clear enough, if you do not have enough listings or if you do not have listings in an area in which you want to have buyers, now what do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, you're selling real estate in an area that, let's say you're selling a lot of distressed property, and let's just say these distressed property areas are not necessarily where you want to have your buyers. Let's say you want to expand your market and you want to start working in a more expensive area. great way to get your foot in that market is with mm -hmm. buyers. Borrow listings from agents that are in that particular market. So in other words, you will start getting buyer leads off their signs. Now, listing agents, for the most part, if we're being honest here, frankly, won't care. They're not going to care the fact that you're borrowing their sign and putting a rider on it. They're not going to care the fact that you're essentially providing a service for them to try to comb off more buyers. Somebody if, asked him, do you, should they expect to pay a referral fee to use their sign? Heck no. No. If somebody asks you for that, move on to the next one. Move agent. on to the next one. Heck no. Don't pay a referral fee for this. Hey, here's the thought and Don't for you. offer one either. Don't N think you have to do that. Right. How many of these agents – Here, I'm gonna, and, and, and I, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> going to get in trouble for doing this, but I'm going to say it anyway – how many of the agents out there right now are taking your listings through, say, a service? You can pick whatever uh, listing distribution online service that you want to. Say Postlets, for example. Zillow owns them. And then what happens is your listing then appears on how many different websites? Eight, ten websites. Woo -hoo! You know, that's some sort of big service to you. Julie, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Is it really? No. What's happening is is your contact information as the listing agent is being scraped off that listing, they're then putting that listing information with the extra pictures you took, with all the time that you took to stage that room, with all the you know, time you took to make sure your grammar and your everything else was perfect for your description. They're taking then your information, taking your picture, your contact information off that listing. They're putting it on their website to attract buyer leads, and then they're selling those buyer leads back to you or your competition. Somehow, that is supposed to be a service to you. Explain that to me. I can't, other than agents not understanding it. Yeah, exactly. You guys can do all this yourself. Yeah, I see that question about referral fees. All right, Julie, let's, let's move on. Okay, good. So, you, you know, when you install this and you use this particular lead generator, which I would say is definitely one of my favorite lead generators because it's very inexpensive and highly effective, and that's what we like to teach you guys. When you have done that, the next step is to remember exactly what Tim just went over with you. Urgency matters. You must call them back immediately. If you do everything we talked about and you sit on your lead follow-up and you only get to it when you feel like it, you're going to think that the leads stink. Okay, so I'm when in make... fact it's your lead follow-up that stinks. That what Julie just said is the most important thing that probably any of you have heard in the past month. Okay, urgency is what matters. Urgency. What is your definition of the word urgent? How long do you think you know, it's okay to call a buyer lead back? Again, think about your own behavior. If you're driving through neighborhoods and you see a sign, a sign for a house for sale and you're interested in it, and then you copy the information down, maybe you even put a call into the realtor and you leave a voicemail, and that realtor calls you back typically, what is it, the next day? Or if not if you're later, lucky. If you don't remember the house. You're no longer excited about it. If you get to that buyer right when they're in that emotional cycle, when they're really, truly interested in whatever it is that is for sale, you are going to form an instant bond with them, and you're most likely going to get that buyer as your client. What do we know about buyer behavior? Most buyers will work with the first person they come in contact with. But sadly, we have discovered that's the first person they come in contact with over the phone or the first person they come in contact with in person, not the first person they come in contact with online. Many of you are confused about that. You think that online is the same as a phone call or in person. It's not. Want proof? How many of your buyers right now or your supposed buyers are in some CRM system getting dripped on by you and 14 other realtors? There's no loyalty. You do not form loyalty from Internet conversations. You do not form loyalty by friending somebody up on Facebook. If you extend that offline, that's where you get loyalty. So when you guys hear that statistic from the National Association of Realtors that you know a very high percent of buyers, or sellers for that matter, work with the first realtor they meet with, 
meet with on the As phone. In, in person. Right. Not or on the phone. online. All right. So, Julie, let's focus on the uh, buyer uh, generators. And then uh, you guys can click that button on the webinar, and you can download all of our other notes that we had prepared for you for this call about, you know, your buyer rules, basically. So okay. next, next uh, lead so under generator. So number, under point number six, Tim, which one do you want to do next? Um, let's talk about something. Uh, again, I want to focus on the stuff that's free. Let's yeah. talk about Craigslist. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So Craigslist, all of you should know by now, is a free service. So you can put a listings up on Craigslist. And, you know, you can put ads, rather, up on uh, Craigslist. There's lots of services now, um, lots and lots, okay, that will essentially create automated Craigslist ads for you. And then they'll post them for you so you don't actually have to do it. Craigslist is designed so that you can't basically spam Craigslist with your ads. But there's services that essentially get around that, right? Now, you can choose to go whatever route you want to. It's up to you. The point is that mostly it's free. Now, let's talk about specifically what types of ads that you can be putting up to attract Buyer leads, and Julie and I are going to brainstorm because we don't have these notes written down. And Rochelle, I know you're listening as well. If you want to IM us or jump on, you can go ahead and do it. But these are the types of ads that we know will attract buyers. And I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with maybe a little bit of an obtuse point. Mm -hmm. How many of you have markets where, in the market rather, there's high rental areas? Like there's an area where there's a very expensive apartment complex or apartment complexes. If you're living in a major city like L.A., you're surrounded by communities like that. How many of those people that are like, say, for example, a prospective tenant is looking in Craigslist about a potential rental in, say, this, you know, Acceleron community or whatever the name is, and how many of them then are, you know, obviously calling on the Craigslist ads looking for a rental? Well, what if you were to put a sign on or an ad in Craigslist talking about a property for sale, again, borrow the listing, a property for sale, or if you did it correctly and didn't list an address, you wouldn't even have to talk to the listing agent. You could just say available listings, right? How many of you would be able to easily generate buyer leads using the 800 Home Hotline with an ad that sounded similar to this? For a free list of homes for sale in the Acceleron community or whatever it's called, you know, call 1-800-555-1212, extension 1234. Okay, now I'm getting a little dance for you guys, but hopefully you can get the concept. Then you can basically make it so your 1-800 home hotline system will be preloaded with a recording of all the available homes for sale. Okay, are you getting this? Are you thinking about this? Now, Provide the information they're looking for in an easy way, and you're saying for free information. Recorded. Exact free recorded information, and studies have shown that when you say recorded, so don't leave that word out, right. that you will capture more calls because they're calling just to listen to a recording. They don't necessarily know they're going to talk to you at that point. They, Julie's point there is crucial. They don't want to talk to somebody. They just want the recorded information. They are intentionally calling so they don't have to talk to somebody. So get that clear in your head. Don't be offended by it. Just understand that's how human behavior works. You're the same way. If you're trying to gather information on whatever product or service it is, chances are you're only going to be talking to a salesperson, a live salesperson, when you're ready to buy. You're going to be using other resources ahead of time to get information on whatever it is so that you can make an informed decision. Does that make sense? Of course it does. You do the same thing. So buyers are going to do the same thing. Run some Craigslist ads. I'll give you some other ideas. What are buyers' big fears and concerns right now? Financing. Everywhere you go, buyers are being told they can't buy. But that is a bunch of crap. Okay, it's not true. They're being told they can't buy by realtors that are ill-informed about the different programs that are out there or loan officers that are, frankly, don't have the information on the different programs that are out there. So what you need to be doing is also running some Craigslist ads. Okay, don't run them under finance. Some of you are going to ask me for real technical information. You literally want to be running them under the names of the communities in the rental section of home, you know, where you know the buyers are looking. Use a fishing analogy. If you're going to go fishing today, you're going to, you, know, you don't just want to cast your line into some pond where there's no fish. You're going to do your homework ahead of time, know that there's fish in the pond. You're going to put the bait on the hook that you know the fish will bite at so you're not wasting your time so you can have dinner tonight. Does that make sense? <laughs> you are literally fishing for your commissions here, guys, which is what feeds you, yes? Yes. Okay, so I'll give you an example. One of my uh, graduate students, Bill Bird, he has educated himself on pretty much every type of financing humanly possible. 
So he knows about USAA loans, FHA, VA, city-sponsored grant money, down payment money, certain areas of his town that have particular grant money attached to them, teacher next door, policeman next door, and he advertises this. He has at least 15 to 20 buyers, okay? Why? Because he's advertising what people are curious about, what they're interested in. And then, Tim, I wanted to also remind these guys to be advertising payments. Payments are key. Now, there's lots of little sticking points with payments. I'll, I'll cover them. But Julie just made, again, some fantastic points. One of the differentiators that all of you should be having in your quiver of arrows, if you will, is the ability to know about all the different financing programs out there. How do you learn about these types of programs? You need to do your homework and find out what loan officers in your community are worth a darn. Again, we don't mince words around here. We're going to tell you guys how the real world works, and we're not going to be politically correct. And get ready for a non-politically correct statement. Many of the loan officers out there stink, and they don't have all the same loan programs. What do I mean by that, Julie? Well, so, for example, if I'm a conventional lender and I work for a big company like, you know, say Chase or something like that, I'm going to be pushing Chase's programs. I'm going to be even using what they call lender overlays, which is an additional set of requirements that perhaps Chase has said – I'm not particularly bashing them. I'm just using them as an example, okay? They're going to be particular to that company. They are going to say things to you like, well, you don't really want to do an FHA loan. You want to do more of a conventional 5 or 10% down loan, and that's going to require stellar credit. So, no, I can't pre-approve your buyer. Well, why are they doing that? Because they'll get paid more commission or because the file will take less processing yeah. effort on their part. And or because they don't actually offer any FHA or VA, so they're going to talk you out of doing FHA or VA for your borrower. And, by the way, they're not going to tell you or your borrower that they're not FHA, VA approved. They're not actually going to no, tell you that. they're just going to say you don't want to do that. Yeah. And or you a, can't do that. Right. They're literally, in order to keep the opportunity to have the loan, they're literally going to try to steer you and your buyer away from a program that, you know, maybe you found out or your buyer is attracted to a specific, you know, FHA, VA, rural farm loan, it doesn't matter. And then you're a loan officer who you've used before in the past, who you've trusted, who maybe you play golf with or the other, you know, things that people do with their loan officers, have lunch or whatever. You then are thinking, well, you know, Johnny, my favorite loan officer, is going to be able to offer whatever program. Well, it turns out Johnny doesn't offer it, but in order to keep the loan and the relationship with you, He's not going to actually tell you that he doesn't offer it. He's not going to say, "Hey, Julie, guess what? I don't do rural loans, or we're not we're, we're not approved with the, the with you know the uh, GSEs to do loans." They're not going to tell you that. So what's going to happen is then they're going to try to flip your buyer to some other program. Guys, this is not so different than what the lenders were doing during the subprime crisis, if you want to call it that, during the bubble, where they were flipping buyers who could qualify for conventional right. loans to um, subprime loans because they paid more commission. Not because they had to have a subprime loan, but because it paid better. The same thing is happening today. It's a different flavor. You need to be informed. Now, how do you go about finding your list of buyer or your list of loan officers to work with? What we did is we had a loan officer, and you should do the same thing, who specialized in jumbo mortgages. Some of you are in a market where that's all there are. And the jumbo loan limits right now are under a big, you know, the big controversy, obviously, being lowered from 729 to 629 in the most expensive areas. But the, the bottom line is, is you need to find somebody who's going to be really, really good at working with upper loan limit type products. Now, they're going to know about all kinds of little programs that you're not going to know about, that you're never going to hear about on the news. There might be some local community bank that you know decides that they want a portfolio, in other words, loan their own money, $10 million to jumbo loans. Okay, And they're going to say, we want in our you know, portfolio, we want $10 million or $100 million worth of really you know, good credit jumbo loans, and we're going to hold them. Well, so in your notes, guys, first thing to understand is it's very unlikely that you will know or come across – a loan officer who can do all of the above well. Right. They probably just don't have all the programs to offer. That's normal. You need to have the following in your back pocket. You need to have a normal jumbo loan, um, you know, typical A paper guy, kind of the slam dunk guy, right? So conventional, you need to have someone who can do self-employed. So in Columbus, we had you know, we would go to Huntington for the easy deals. Then we would go to Fifth Third for the self-employed people because they were specializing in that at the time. 
You need to have a first-time buyer FHA VA lender in your back pocket. Usually whoever does FHA and VA is your first-time buyer you know, go-to guy. And your first-time buyer go-to guy is probably not going to be a good loan officer for some relocating executive who wants to buy some very expensive house. Right, not the same loan officer. You know, you don't use the same guy every time or gal. And literally, and literally it's because the uh, upper-end loan officer, if you want to call him that, is going to be more comfortable working with an upper-end borrower, just like some of you are not comfortable working on upper-end listings if you're specializing in lower stuff, or some of you guys that work nothing but upper-end stuff literally don't know what to do with a lower-end buyer or a lower-end seller. So it's the same thing in the loan officer world, but it's important that you understand how to transcend all the Mickey Mouse and pick out the good loan officers from the bad ones and ask the tough questions. questions. You might have to talk to three guys or gals before you decide who's great at first-time buyers. Oh, and by the way, the rule that Julie and I always had with our loan officers was – when we send you a loan, when we send you a buyer, you have to send us a buyer. So if we set you up with a mortgage, you have to return the favor and send us a buyer. And they, you have 12 months to do it. And if you didn't do it, well, then guess moving what? On. We're moving on. And that's the way it works. So that's another great source of buyer leads for you. Yes. Yeah, so if you're just working with one lender right now, you only have the opportunity to get one source of referral. You know, there are buyers in the world that get their loan first before they talk to you. I'm thinking people like Dave Ramsey leads. Those guys all do it that way, okay? So it is possible for these lenders, and they should be sending you people who come to them first who don't have a realtor or a house picked out yet. And, again, we like Dave Ramsey leads, and we like that, you know, we're talking about how you guys can generate your own business and you can stop paying for your leads. And we're talking – and basically what you're learning here, it's all about knowledge and thinking outside of the box. And And I'm really going to – we're really going to lay into this. In the next 12 months, stop paying for buyer leads. It's insane. Generate your own. Okay, so other types of loans you need somebody that can do, uh, for example, a lot of you guys have had condo deals die because they couldn't do a a non-FHA approved condo development. There are some programs out there that you can do that. Usually they take a little bit higher down payment, but it can be done. Stop believing that it's impossible. You just got to find the right lender. So how does our financing rant where, uh, break into basically how to generate more buyer leads? We were talking about ads, okay? We are talking about free ads on Craigslist. We are talking about the different things you can do, and, and many of you in many of your communities, maybe the local newspaper actually works. Now, it's not free, but still, you'll have to know your own particular market. If you're able to offer information on different loan products that other realtors aren't or can't or won't, you will get the buyer leads. So, Especially if you advertise payments, right? So, you, right. Tim, you were talking about these high-end rentals, these high-end apartment buildings, exactly. right? So let's say that you're someplace in uh, you know, downtown L.A. or Atlanta or someplace in civilization where there's lots of these newish construction big apartment buildings – and people are paying, say, twenty five hundred bucks a month. Well, so we pick beautiful. Vegas. Pick Vegas, Vegas, where we Vegas live. Is yeah, full of it, right? yeah. We live in we live in an area where lots of these very ex- once very expensive mid and high rise condo buildings have been converted to apartments. And so you have places that were literally selling for seven hundred and fifty grand that are now renting for two thousand dollars a month. Right. Okay, we own we own a few of them, you know, as rentals. But here's the thing: if I were to advertise as a realtor, if I were to advertise. And Craigslist is an example. Knowing that somebody's looking in, you know, pick the high-rise tower building, the Celeron, just the made-up name I thought of a second ago, and you start advertising the fact that someone can buy in that building or a similar building for the same that they'd be paying in or rent less. or less. Yeah, good point. You will be surprised the phone calls you will get because people right now do not have the correct information. They literally believe that they can't buy. They literally are listening to the news and some of their friends, and they're saying, well, I'm not even going to try. Whereas you're going to rent a Craigslist ad and say, looking to rent an Acceleron? You know, how about this? You can rent or you can buy, and the payment will be virtually the same. You know, and you'll have a certain percent of people that will say, hey, tell me more about that. Free buyer lead. Right. I mean, if you know, look at it this way. When you see a car commercial on the TV, they don't tell you it's forty grand. They tell you the payment. They tell you you can lease it for, you know, 199 a month or whatever, right? So do what the other big advertisers are doing because it works. Okay? That's right. Someone asked how yeah. much about 1-800-HOME hotline. Yeah. Guys, I'm going to do you a favor. Since Julie and I own part of that company, all of you who are in, it's only $35 a month, by the way. All of you guys who are interested in 1-800-HOME hotline, 
we, have, we don't talk about it enough. Uh, we're going to be talking about it more in, uh, in the next 12 months. But I want you to send me an email or just in the webinar, if you're on the webinar, send your contact information, your email address and your phone number. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that all of you guys get a free month of 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM. You know what? I'm going to do that as much as I can to help you guys as much as I can so that you have no excuses not to be making a lot of money now. Making a lot of money now. Okay, five, six years ago, we were talking about the fact you've got to focus on being of service, and that's true. But guess what? Today, you've got to be focusing on making yourself a lot of money because ultimately that's going to be putting you in a position where you are being of service to others. Because the only way you're making money is because you are being of service. And some of you are getting confused that you should be somehow sacrificing yourself and your time and your expertise for free. And that is not the case. We want all of you to be filthy rich. Okay? That's what we believe in, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, let's Fire lead generators. Yes. And by the way, since you were kind enough to give that to them, I'm going to go out on a limb and say anybody that needs a free coaching call for help of how to implement the 1-800-HOME hotline, just email me, Julie at Harris Real Estate University dot com, or you can live chat with Rochelle and we'll get set up. Most of you will be able to figure it out relatively quickly, but if you get tangled up in how to implement, that's fine. I'm happy to help you out with that. So one eight hundred home hotline dot com. Those of you who want a free month, email me directly or just let us know in the webinar, Tim at Harris Real Estate University dot com. Tim at Harris Real Estate University dot com or just put a comment in the webinar. But I need your name, your email address, and your phone number and do not assume I know who you are because there's hundreds of you listening right now. I want to read a comment from Deborah Julie as you get mm -hmm. to the next point. And again guys, all you get is click the button on the webinar and you can go and download our notes. Julie and I are working on the specific section about lead generation. You can read the other points about working with buyers in this market on your own. Deborah says uh, referring back to the, or suggesting um, my lenders are not referring back to me, and they've gotten a lot of buyers for me. I'm mm -hmm. stopping that. Just picking up a third lender that I like, and I'm picky on who I refer to. I need to know uh, that they can do the job to represent me well uh, to my buyers. I'm changing the playing roles. Finally, Deborah, good job. And yeah. she's from Los, Los Alamitos. As yeah. all of you should do if you're not getting referrals from them. Ask first. You know, maybe you're not getting them because you've never asked. And then make an assessment. And here's a thought for you. The fact that these loan officers don't have buyer leads themselves tells you that they're probably crappy loan officers. Yeah. Okay? They probably have an inability to follow up on their own leads. That's the reason they don't have leads to send to you. If they were decent, they would be doing what you're doing. They would be out there lead generating. The fact that they're just trying to build parasitical type relationships you know, with you and not actually out there generating their own business is not the loan officer you need in this marketplace. You need somebody who's frosty. You need somebody who's actually being aggressive and proactive, like many of you are. Exactly. All right. So do you want to stay on lead generation or do you want to I promise you that today? every single person on this call wants me to stay on lead generation. <laughs> okay. Just checking. All right. So a little uh, promoted often forgotten about, highly effective thing, and some of you guys are going to roll your eyes when you hear this, but I'm telling you, you do it right, and you will have closings next month as a result, and that is strategic open houses. Okay, I'm going to say this again, because you are not, those of you who are not listening, I'm not going to be giving you a free month of 800 home hotline. Okay, you have to, you have to either enter into the webinar your name, your email address, and your phone number, Okay, or email me directly with that information if you're listening to this on the phone, Tim at Harris Real Estate University dot com. If you miss anything, we're not going to try to find your information. We're just going to assume that you didn't listen so you weren't serious about wanting the free month. So it's for a free month of eight hundred home hotline. Just email me directly or put it in the webinar and I'll have uh, probably Carl contact you with that free month. It's definitely worth doing. If I already get back to selling real estate. This would be the first thing that Absolutely. I would be doing. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, it's just, this kicks QWR code's butt. Yeah, this, everybody has a cell phone. Not everybody has a Q, uh, QR reader. Yeah, when was the last time you put your cell phone up to a QWR and basically to get the free coupon or widget? I have never done it, and I never will. I'm not in Japan. <laughs> right, at least not in this decade probably. Okay. Yeah. All right, so strategic open houses. Yes, you did them when you first got licensed, and guess what? You did deals as a result, didn't you? So why is it when some of you get successful and busy, you get away from the basic free things that made you successful and busy in the first place? Now, I'm not talking about just you know calling somebody on a Saturday afternoon and saying, I'm doing an open house tomorrow, Sunday at your house, be ready, and then putting one sign in the yard and hoping for the best. 
That is a lame, ineffective open house. I'm talking about having a minimum of 10 directional signs, even if you have to borrow those directional signs. Minimum 10 directional signs strategically placed. I'm talking about having a list of Joy, all – yes. What you what strategically placed mean? It means actually on intersections that will drive traffic to your actual open house. That's right, everywhere. And that, she said that she said something important. Did you guys catch it? She doesn't want you just to put a sign on the nearest intersection in front of the house, like many of you do. She wants you to plaster the world with open house directional signs. The point is for people to show up. Right, and you have to lead them back in from the the most the busiest street. Now, when picking your open house, you have to be strategic. Okay, Julie, what type of house should they be holding open? Okay, the same type of house that pounds the 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE type <laughs> of leads, okay, which is typically, and you guys know because this is what all your buyers are asking for, this is, you know, ask yourself this. If you could only have one listing in one neighborhood, in one price range, where would you put it? The answer is in a hot neighborhood that gets all the calls and all of the action that you can sell right away. And if you don't have a house like that, if you don't borrow personally it. have a listing like that, borrow it. Go to your yeah. own broker. Go to the agents in your office. Find out what they've got. Uh, some of you guys have, you know, in your, your bigger box uh, brokerages, there's an open policy. Anyone can hold anyone's listing open any time, and that's great. But what I want you to do, and by the way, most listing agents are going to be thrilled that you want to hold their listing open because that gets them brownie points for their sellers. They've been begging for an open house for weeks. Yeah. They're about to get fired because they said, oh, I don't do open houses. That's right, and you are going to do open houses. And by the way, in some cases, you'll end up getting their expired listing. You know, Oops. But that's sort of, you know, yeah, pretty anyway. controversial. <laughs> okay, so uh, back to our strategic open house. Minimum of 10 actual directional signs strategically placed in places that will drive traffic. If you're not sure what type of house we're talking about, you're going to have to spend some time on your MLS, ask your broker, do a little bit of research, you know, talk to me about it, I'll help you, whatever it takes, but identify the right house. Now, next, you're going to make absolutely certain that you actually do get people to sign in. Have a respectable-looking sign-in book with a sample signed-in name and a little tent sign, a little triangle sign standing up that says, the seller requests that all guests sign in. That way it's not because the realtor is making me do it. It's because the seller wants to know who's tromping through their house. That makes sense, right? And the seller's not there to argue with, so they will do it. Hand them the pen and say, the seller requests that we have all guests sign in. If you wouldn't mind, please jot your name down. Stand there with your iPad. With all the other, and if you don't have an iPad, have a printout. Don't make this complicated, guys. Of all the other homes that are for sale in the community. Yes, this is key. Do not give them the information. If you walk in there and you prepared all these beautiful flyers and all this great information on everything else that's for sale in the community, they're going to walk in, they're going to be polite, they're going to eat your cookies, they're going to have a drink of your whatever, they're going to grab your information, and they're going to bail. Okay? You need to hold that information back. You need to say, I have a list of all the other homes that are actually currently for sale. And if you're really crafty, you're going to have some pocket listings. Now, not pocket listings in the traditional sense, but you're going to know what inventory is coming for sale next. You're going to have gone to the MOS. Maybe you just have some app open on your iPhone which, or on your iPad, which is going to have excuse me, all the information about everything else that's for sale out of the MOS. Okay, so let's stop there for a second. Why is that critical? Well, your typical open house experience is they like the neighborhood or they wouldn't be walking in the door. They come in and they discover it's a three-bedroom, but they have three kids. They need a four-bedroom. So they walk out the door and you lost the lead. That's right. You have the other information. You know they like the neighborhood, so you've got on your iPad or on your printout, however you're doing it, you have information on all of the four bedrooms in that same neighborhood just for this case scenario. Gosh, you know, I'm sorry, this particular house doesn't have that fourth bedroom, but let me tell you about the one down the street. Let's go ahead and set up a showing to see that right after my open house today at 4 o'clock, or is 5 o'clock better for you? That's right. I don't know how much more clear that you can be than that. Okay, so there's a difference between doing a highly effective dollar productive open house that nets you closable, sometimes that evening closable buyers, versus being the lazy open house agent that turns on the football game and hopes that somebody rolls into the house. That way they can just tell the seller they did something. Now, do not try to – there's a lot of realtors out there right now that are basically making it so that it's still all about them. When you get a buyer walking into your open house, when you get somebody that's actually seriously looking, when they're going through open houses, guys, in an economy like this, in a housing market like this, 
you can pretty much be guaranteed they're one of two things. Well, one of three things. They're bored and just looking for something to do, which is going to be a minority of them. They're neighbors that are che- uh, checking out um, what the house, neighbor's house is, uh, looks like, looking for maybe their missing one lawnmower. More. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they're, they're neighbors that might be thinking about selling their house or are having their house currently for sale, but the agent isn't doing their job. In other words, potential listing for you, okay? Or they are 100% serious, ready to buy buyers. Yes. And by the way, some of those neighbors that we perceive are just in there looking for their lawnmower, some of them are checking out what the price is because they're getting ready to list. Some of them are checking the price because they're thinking maybe they're going to end up being a short sale. They don't know what to do. And they're, you know, we've even had many people come in and they say, you know what, I'm picking my agent off of open house agents because yep. I don't know how else to meet agents. That's right. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm going to go back to your Craigslist yep. thing, the Julie, that we used to do. On your Craigslist ads, we're talking about the other free things you guys can do, and there's lots more than Craigslist nowadays, and tons and tons of places you can advertise online free using the 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE system. Okay, again, it's 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM if you guys want a free month. Just email me directly, Tim at Harris Real Estate University.com, or put a comment in the webinar, and Carl will call you guys back. All right, so stay focused here. The nice thing, other nice thing about 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE is you can run uh, a report. For example, let's say in Craigslist, you're going to run uh, an informational report in a particular, how do I break this down, in a homes for rent section. So in a homes for rent section, and you're advertising in an area, or a home for rent, in an area that you know there's a lot of foreclosures. Okay, so let me be more specific. In every single community where essentially, you know, most of the country right now, I mean, there's reports that have come out in the past week or so showing that virtually every market foreclosures are dramatically increasing. It's not just the sand states or the states that you hear about on the news all the time. It's in the Midwest. It's in the Northwest. It's everywhere now. So foreclosures are increasing. What happens is when someone is going for foreclosure, they have a notice of default issued, you know, they've gone through this process and that process, and the moving day is imminent, they want to stay in the same community most times. They want to keep the same schools, same churches, synagogues, mosques, and grocery stores. And so if you are advertising a house for rent in the particular area that they're having to move from because that's where their you know, former home was, you're going to get a lot of buyer leads that way or tenant leads. So what we know from people's behavior is they start looking for a home to rent before actually they have to move. It makes sense, right? They want to know where to go, common sense here. Advertise a report on how they can avoid foreclosure and tie it to the 1-800 number. Again, a lot of these guys are going to want the information first before they actually talk to you. Many of you are only half listening to me right now, and you're not going to do it correctly, and then you're going to wonder why it didn't work like we promised that it would. It's because you think you're more clever than what's been proven to work for thousands of realtors for dozens of years, and you're, you're going to say, well, I'm going to direct them to a website. I'm going to have them call me on my cell phone. They won't call you. They won't go to your website. They want the information now. So you're Stop sam- avoiding people. Please. So your sample <laughs> ad could be, for example, um, considering uh, trying to avoid foreclosure, free report on the seven be- – I'm just making this up. This is an example. Free report on the seven ways that you can avoid foreclosure now. Call 1-800-555-1212, and then, you know, basically they'll hit extension 700. In 700, you'll have a recording there that basically tells them the seven ways to avoid foreclosure, or you can also make it – the service will allow you to make it so – they can request the report be faxed to them by entering in their fax number or emailed to them, and then you can email them the report. The bottom line is, is once they call the 800 number, their information, their phone number is captured. They cannot block it. Anytime you guys call an 800 number, an 888 number, a 900 number, any toll-free number where the person you're calling is paying for the call, you can't block it. And so what happens then, even if it's on a cell phone, you then get con- you get text paged emailed within usually 60 seconds of the person just calling, and the system will also tell you the extension they just dialed. So I want you to imagine you're listening to this uh, this uh, training event right now, and you get a text, let's say, or an email, and it's saying that you know this particular uh, phone number just called asking for this particular report. And you know that is a report on people who want to avoid foreclosure. And you say, aha, that is probably a wonderful short sale listing lead. Then you're going to call them back 
and we're going to, you know, the script is very simple. Hi, this is Tim Harris with ABC Realty. As a courtesy, when people call our 800 number, we like to give them a quick call back to see if they have any questions about the home they called about, or in this particular example, the report on avoiding foreclosure that you called about. What questions do you have for me now? And they're going to have questions. That is going to be a primo lead for you. Yes. Okay, so stop for a second. Two mistakes that agents make when they do this type of action. Number one is they uh, take too long to follow up, or number two, they assume that because somebody ordered a free report that they're not really interested in anything except the free report. So you must follow up, and you must use a script when you follow up. That's right. That's the bottom line. Okay, so this has been like 101 ways to make money for without spending a lot of money. Well, but <laughs> I, again, great. it is really making me angry, and I'm sincerely <laughs> angry that me realtors too. are being so bamboozled into believing that they have to buy their buyer leads. Do you guys have to pay for buyer leads? Buyer leads are the last. Now, if you're a subscriber to Dave Ramsey's system and he's sending you really rock and seller leads, you know what? Those are worth a 25% referral fee yeah. all day long. You know, if you're using another service, there's other services out there that will generate buyer leads, but they're also doing other things for you at the same time. That's worth considering. But these pure plays where all they're doing is taking your information, packaging it up, putting a bow on it, and then selling the leads back to you, disgusts me. You guys have to stop doing that. Generate your own buyer leads. Yeah, well, and they're not just selling them back to you. They're letting other agents do deals off of your listings while they're at it. And then they're saying if you don't call, if you don't basically pay us X amount per month, your buyer leads off your listings are going to go to your competitor. And you guys are putting up with that? Really? <laughs> exactly. Okay, so, and Tim, my phone is about to lose battery, so I'm going to call back in. It's the Tim show for a couple of minutes. Oh, boy. All right, <laughs> so here, guys, is the bottom line with all of this. You've got to start taking more responsibility for your, someone just said, yes, Deborah, I know. Craig Proctor has an 800 number. Yours is less expensive, and not just a little bit less expensive. Ours is dramatically less expensive. Why? Because one of our partners, Carl Fisher, developed the technology. He actually created the technology, and we did all of it from scratch. And, by the way, it's because all this stuff has fallen dramatically in price. When Julie and I were using the 800 number back in the early 90s, we were paying on average back then like $500 a month. Okay, because you had to pay for the number, you had to pay for the time, you had to pay for all this. Thirty-five dollars a month is a flat fee. None of you will, and that's it. An unlimited number of calls, a limited amount of time, and unlimited number of listings. So it's a flat fee. You, you, you know, you can't go wrong there. If you want the service free for thirty days, I want you just to email me directly or put a comment in the webinar, yep. um, and it is uh, again at Tim at Harris Real Estate University dot com. Uh, or you can uh, just put the comment in the webinar, and I'll have Carl contact you. Yeah. Now here's right, the thing: Julie, just because it's yeah. free, just because it's free, doesn't mean you put it on the back burner for 30 days before you do anything about it. I'm offering you a free coaching call to help you get it launched. You must take action on this. It's only $35 after that 30-day uh, free. Okay, and you will get I don't know how many thousand percent return on that investment. We've well, just no, touched yeah, 30, the tip bucks. of the iceberg. Right, exactly. You so, know, there uh, are sorry we so some, many more ways. Yeah. Sorry we had some technical issues on this call. The fact is is that we're in the process of upgrading all the technology at Harris Real Estate University as we do every November and December, and so we're starting to suffer from some of the downtime Growing of some in. of our servers. We have servers in four different states, and obviously we're having some issues today. So those of you who had a little bit of hard time attending today, I apologize. But here's the bottom line, guys. You know, you have to be taking action. You have to be staying focused. You have to be doing the things now that are going to pay you, not just for the next 30 days, but for the next year. That starts with you being okay with being proactive. And for those of you who are waiting to feel a certain way, ah, Tim, I just don't feel motivated. Oh, Where's me out when I, I hear feel, that? You know, you guys, you guys are always using lack of motivation as your, lack of, as your reason for not taking action and being broke or not – being as wealthy as you should be. And I'm here to tell you the one thing more effective than anything else that's going to make you feel motivated is getting into action. If you don't feel, if you're like me and you never feel like exercising, but you force yourself to exercise every day, like I have to, okay, the way I do it is I put my tennis shoes on and I start exercising. And then after, for me, about 10 or 15 minutes, I actually feel like exercising. Everything in life works that way, that once you get your body into action, your thoughts, your energies, your emotions, everything changes. 
The key to being motivated long-term, guys, is just to take action. If you wait around for your thoughts to lead the way and your emotions to lead the way, in other words, if you wait around to feel motivated, you will never take action. Take the action first, and then the feelings will follow. That is a huge success secret that we learned from doing. Okay, we never read that anywhere else. We just learned it from personal experience and watching so many of our great coaching clients become more and more successful from following that advice. So do the same thing. Yes, it's easier than avoiding doing it in reality. Okay, you guys spend a lot of effort getting ready to get started and thinking about possibly maybe feeling excited enough on a certain day to actually be motivated. That takes a lot of energy to go through that process. Just do the work. It's easier and it's much more profitable. So, again, we, tipped, we got on the tip of the iceberg about the 1-800-HOME hotline system. It's also a killer listing tool. There's all kinds of other really great stuff. And you don't have to have a lot of listings for it to work. You can do what we talked about at the top of the call, borrow other agents' listings. So that's good homework for you to be doing. We talked about having a strategic open house. We talked about different types of advertising, Craigslist and other things. So we've given you probably 10 different things for you to implement don't just choose one or two. Choose probably four or five that you're going to be very committed to, very consistent with, and implement at the highest level humanly possible. When you do the things that other people won't do at a very high level, even if you don't feel like it, you will do, be, see, and have what other people aren't doing, being, seeing, or having. It's very simple. That is the definition of success. So if you need help with any of this, we don't know if you need help if you don't raise your hand and ask for help. We have live chat on the blog and on harrisrealestateuniversity.com. You can email us, as you've done for Tim for the free month, over the webinar. So that's last call for that right now, and we will have Carl call you. Make sure that you call him back. So um, let me do know, the last call. Don't be a secret said, agent. If, if those of you want the free month uh, for a 800 homehotlinecom it's free. Just email me directly, tim at harrisrealestateuniversity.com, or in the webinar, Go ahead and put all of your contact information. You need to put your name, your email address, and your phone number, and then Carl will follow up with you in the next week or so and get you your free month. Okay, some of you have asked other questions about Deborah. You asked the question about the sign writers and all that. That information is included uh, with a 100 home hotline system. The 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM website is being updated right now. Um, so, you know, the bottom line here is, guys, this is the cheapest in this case free because we're giving you a month uh, away for free, this is the cheapest overall way if you combine the things that we talked about, the free Craigslist ads, the doing the open house, the strategic open houses, not just any old open house anywhere. Don't do open houses on condos because they're too hard to find parking and you can't sign them. Do open houses on homes. If you're living in an area like New York City where it's nothing but condos, obviously you have to follow different rules. But think, be strategic. Do not do open houses that are buried 15 miles back in some neighborhood or some rural road. No one's going to drive them. Do strategic open houses. Put out tons of signs. Do, do lots of free Craigslist ads that everyone goes back to calling the 800 number. All of this stuff works, and it's free. Free is good. Okay. <laughs> so the only reason you wouldn't implement something free is laziness, and that's kind of hard to cure. So that's up to you guys. Yeah, All right, exactly. good. So you guys have tons of homework, all of which is designed to make you money, and very little of it is ever going to cost you any money. So take action. Don't wait until the beginning of the year, guys. Don't say, I'll just do that in January. Do it now. Be ready. You will have more commissions in December in whatever, if you're listening to this in call replay, whatever fast forward 30 days is, implement things today that will pay you in 30, 60, 90 days out. If you wait 30, 60, 90 days to implement, well, now you're looking at six months until the commission that results from that action. So don't do that. Take action now. And again, if you need help, you know how to reach us. We don't hide out from you. We're very easy to schedule with, to talk to in chat and email, whatever you need. We are here for you. So uh, parting words for them, Tim? Yeah, get off your butts. Seriously. <laughs> Good some, parting some, words, some, yes. I words mean, some, some of you – some of you are like, oh, Tim, you need to say something more motivational to me. You oh, need please. to, you know, you need to give me some sort of a, a shot of adrenaline. No, you need to do it yourself. A good yes. coach, someone who truly cares about you, does not want you to be dependent on them. I do not want you dependent on Julie or myself or any of our coaches. You have to be dependent on yourself. You have to learn the power of action, the power of getting off your butt and actually doing something. Yeah, we give if you the tools to work with. 
if you're if that's too direct for you, you need to ask yourself why. Why is that too direct for you? Why is it why is it you felt slightly offended by me telling you to get off your butt? It's probably because you know in your core that you need to get off your butt and you just don't like somebody telling you that. Get off your butt, start taking action, just do a fourth of the things that we ask you to do. And when you start making money, when you start seeing that everything we ask you to do is effective, most cases not very difficult to do, and will make you money, you will 100% be addicted to action. You'll never have a motivation problem again. You'll always know in your heart of hearts that anytime you're feeling a lack of motivation, anytime you're not necessarily knowing what direction to go into, that all it takes is one foot in front of the other, taking action, taking the right actions. A smart man learns from his mistakes, guys. A brilliant man learns from the mistakes of others. The same goes with learning in general. Don't try to recreate the wheel. Just copy what other people have done to become successful. It's the easiest way for you to make money. It's the easiest way for you to turn your situation around. And by the way, guys, when you become successful, the more successful you become, you then become a micro example in your community amongst your friends and your family that, hey, you know what? I can turn it around as well. I can, you know, get my my own personal economy turned around. And then one by one what happens is communities start to wake up again. Optimism returns to America Guys, if you think that your success is something that you shouldn't be enjoying now because so many other people are supposedly, if you believe the news, suffering, well, guess what? You're going to suffer too. You're going to be just like them. If someone once said the best way to help the homeless is not joining them. Don't become them. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> your homework, if you're interested, in 1-800-HOMEHOTLINE.COM. Send me an email, tim at harrisrealestateuniversity.com, and we'll give you a free month or – just let me know on the webinar, and you have to include your name, your email address, and your phone number, and you will get the service for a month for free, and you can test it out. Carl just sent me a text, and he told me that we're not going to be able to start the free service until December, but that's fine. You guys will have uh, plenty of time to get it started over the holidays. So on behalf of Julie, myself, and all the faculty and staff here at Harris Real Estate University, I want to thank you for joining us for today's Superstar Interview. Have a terrific weekend.